could you imagine having to speak to over 500,000 people? And to add to that, could you imagine having slept late and you didn't have time to pray before you went out to speak to them? Well, that actually happened to Daniel Kalenda. After traveling many hours to get to the nation where he was going to minister, he overslept, I know. You're going to be encouraged with Daniel's transparency and honesty, honesty for all to hear. It's God that heals. Takes a look. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Well, we're going to be talking about a graduate from the Brownsville Revival School of Ministry, That's which right. was established during the Brownsville Revival. Mm -hmm. It took place on the Gulf Coast uh, that was pastored by uh, John Kilpatrick and the evangelist was Steve, Steve Hill. Hill. But one of the one of the free fruit, we're actually fruit from yeah, that yeah, as well. We are. Absolutely. But also, um, Daniel Kalinda. Daniel Kalinda, yeah. who, who actually is a graduate of BRSM. Graduate BRSM and then later transitioned into ministry with Reinhard Bunke. Who was over a uh, lot of ministry over yes. the world, but Africa, assignment uh, was Africa. Yes, assignment was Africa, ministry is Christ for all nations. And Reinhard Bunke, they said he's preached to more people face to face than anyone. Uh, Half a million people show up to those crusades in Africa. It's just a wonderful. Thousands and thousands it's of healings. Amazing. It's just amazing. Amazing. One, one was millions. Remember the millions that was oh, there? That yeah. one was like waves of, of humanity and yeah, all. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, this is the man that uh, the spiritual son, if you would, of Reinhard Bunke, who is, took on the mantle and is now continuing yes, on with in the work. The ministry. Absolutely. Still going strong. And so, they're, they're in this panel at the Jesus 18 conference. And um, he's being asked, listen, you know, tell about that time when you had to go preach to half a million people and you fell asleep and you didn't get time to pray. And because a lot of times we think that it's up to us, you know, we have to be so engaged and we have to pray right and fast right and read all the scriptures and all this type of stuff. And it's important to abide with the Lord, but God's not depending solely upon us. Yeah. Listen to Daniel, see, see what the Lord told him. Dan, do you remember that... Uh the crusade, it had, to be, it had to be like four or five years ago. You were tired, you flew in late, didn't have time to pray, and uh, you took the platform. Talk, talk about that, because I think it ties in perfectly. Um, okay, this, was, this probably was Sierra Leone, if I remember correctly. And uh, one of, it was one of those long flights like we were on the other day. And uh, we, I landed just a few hours before the meeting. I thought, I'm going to go to my room, I'm going to take a nap, I'll get up a few minutes early, pray, go to the meeting. And the next thing I remember is somebody pounding at the door, saying, the meeting started, what, what's happening? And I slept in. And so, you know, I jumped out of bed. You know that feeling when you get awakened with a rush of adrenaline? And um, I'm getting myself ready. I didn't shower, I didn't brush my teeth, I just went, you know? <laughs> and I'm sitting in the car driving to the meeting, and I, I'm, my, my brain's still foggy. I felt anything but spiritual, let's put it that way. And um, I remember just praying and I said, Lord, I, I said, I'm sorry, I, I'm about to go speak to half a million people and I haven't even prayed. And I felt the Lord say to me, don't worry, I'm not going to hold myself back because of you. And so, wow, wow, thank you, Jesus. And, and here, here's what makes the story unique from my perspective. When I went out there on the platform, Peter Vandenberg, you know Peter Vandenberg, he's been with Reinhardt for 30 some years and he's, he's still with me at all the crusades. We were sitting there together on the platform and there was announcements going on. They were doing what they call in Africa protocol, just recognizing everybody and naming everyone's titles. It's completely boring. So we were just <laughs> amusing ourselves. You know, we're talking, we're joking. You know, Peter's a, 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 he's a joker. He loves to crack jokes and we're laughing. And suddenly I, I hear just this explosion of sound out in the audience. It's somebody, I know the sound because at the end of the meetings when we pray for the sick, I hear this often. What happens is when, when a person gets healed and the people standing around see the miracle, they begin to scream. And you know what's happened. You can, you can tell before you even see it. And, um, and I heard that sound during the announcements. And I looked and a wheelchair went up in the air and I jabbed Peter in the ribs. I said, hey, Peter, that's got to be a new one. Somebody got healed during the announcements, you know, and we started laughing. And I thought nothing of it, and then it happened again. And, and now it was a little bit weird, because you know, once is weird enough, twice is extraordinary. Then it happened again, and then it happened again, and by this time they're happening on top of each other so that the sound is becoming a crescendo. And I literally, without any exaggeration, at one moment, hundreds of miracles start wow. happening all over the place. Wow. And the sound of the people screaming in sheer um, just amazement grew so loud that you couldn't hear the guy making the announcements wow. anymore over the PA system. 
And he turned to me and he shrugged his shoulders like this. And, and he said, what do I do? I, I said, I don't know what to do. I didn't start this. So he handed, he handed me the microphone, you know, thinking I'm supposed to manage this situation. And I stood up there and I looked and everywhere I could see the place was just bedlam. Wheelchairs, crutches, people screaming, their eyes have been open, their ears have been open. And, and the fear of God came over me. I put the microphone down and I went back to my seat and sat down. For the next 45 minutes, it was without any music, without anyone praying, without any announcements, just miracles happening all over the wow. place. And, wow. Amazing. and I, I learned something that day about the miraculous, at least I think the Lord was trying to teach me something. We all know that it's not about us. We all know we don't make miracles. But I think sometimes the Lord just has to show us that not only does he, not only do we not make them, but sometimes he does them despite us. And, um, and, and I think that's one of the most powerful revelations that you can have in, in the healing ministry. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what, if you fight, you win, you'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, your actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. And look what they're doing, they're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you, you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we wanna bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. That's so important. You know, you, you, you start, you st it's what, think about Galatia. You know, they started off just because they believed. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they got all caught up in themselves and what they were doing. Yeah. And then they started trusting in what they were doing. doing instead of believing. And he called that being bewitched, Witched. being yeah. cut in on. And said, that's, that's not of God. And that it's so easy to do because you, once God involves you in the equation, you get a tendency to think you're part of the equation <laughs> versus like he's just allowing you to be a part of it, right? Yeah. Which is, takes a ton of pressure off of you and you realize that you know, God's going to do what he's going to do. You know, your job is to be there and to be obedient to him. It's his kingdom, not your kingdom, and that he's going to do show himself. It's his name, not your name. That's right. Uh, that he, it's his people that he wants to right. touch for his glory. So yeah. he can relax. And that he's drawing them to himself, drawing them to himself yeah. and not to you That's or important. to your organization That's or your, it's to him, to him. And it's like, wait a minute, this is his story, <laughs> right? Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.